Now, hello everyone, how are you? I hope you're doing good. In the last couple of videos, we've talked a lot about business and what my day as a UX writer looks like, etc., etc. So I thought it might be time to do some writing again. And today I brought you a really, really cool framework that could come in very handy when you want to write UX copy professionally, but you don't really know how to approach it in a structured and strategic way. And if you're ready to do that, let's go. Hello, my name is Kat and I teach people about writing in tech. I'm on this channel, you will find everything that you need to know, especially about UX writing. So if you want to learn more about all of that, make sure to hit subscribe and ring the bell. And by the way, if you want some in-depth UX writing knowledge or even earn a certificate, make sure you check out my UX writing online courses. They will give you profound and hands-on practical knowledge starting at only $29. And you can find them on my website, writewithdrkat.com. Link is also in the description box below. So what I always try to teach my students is that they should approach writing strategically, systematically. That is exactly the difference between a professional writer and a person that just writes. That is how you learn to explain your writing decisions in a structured way, okay? So you need this for a lot of reasons. And today, very briefly, I want to show you a framework that might be helpful in this regard. And the cool thing is that this formula does not only work for microcopy, but also for marketing copy on your website or in your app. So let's check it out. Now, in order to work with language in a structured and professional way, it can help to break down text elements into single parts. So that's exactly what I did to develop this formula. I looked at many different text elements like error messages, placeholders, marketing, hero stage value propositions, and much more. And what I realized is that most of the text elements in digital interfaces involve one or more of the following types of information. Information. First, there is information about the current state. So what is happening right now? Is there an empty shopping cart? Or is there an error that occurred? Or does the user need help with something? That is the first type of information. Second, we have a call to action. So what do we want our users to do right now? And this could be a button, it could be a link, or just a simple sentence within a text element. Third, we have information about the desired results of that action. So for example, sign up to get the best discount sent to you every week or buy our product to get ahead of your competition or something like that. Then fourth, there is information about the feature or a function that we offer and that we want the user to know about right now. And ultimately, the last one, brand indicating information or brand indicators and mental relaxers. These are usually elements with no to low unique informative value. They are just here to represent the voice and tone of a brand or strengthen the brand perception. So this might be something like oops or whoa or seems like you took a wrong turn or whatever. These are the major five types of information that we find in interface text elements. Sounds complicated? It isn't. Okay, let me show you. Now this right here is an example coming from MailChimp saying turn emails into revenue, win new customers with the number one email marketing and automations platform that recommends ways to get more opens, clicks, and sales. And at the end, we have a sign up button. If we now try to categorize the information that we find here, we see that up here, we have a desired outcome. Turn emails into revenue and win new customers we see a longer feature explanation following and ultimately we see a CTA. So this piece of copy covers three main information categories. And of course, you can always hit pause and take a closer look at this for yourself, read this for yourself to really, you know, comprehend what we're talking about here. And if you're ready, Let's take a look at another example, a 404 error message taken from the website of Wayfair. And they say, seems like we've rearranged some furniture. Sorry, what you're looking for ended up elsewhere. Try a new search or use the links at the top of the page to find what you're looking for. And if you want to, you can also press pause here and categorize the single parts of information in this text element yourself, or you can just let me do the work. 
Now at the top, we see a brand indicator. So something that has not deep, unique, informative value, but is rather here to strengthen the perception the user has of the brand. Right below that, we see what you're looking for ended up somewhere else, which is information about the current status. Then there is try a new search or use the links at the top of the page, which is clearly a call to action because we ask the user to try something. And ultimately, we see to find what you're looking for, which is the desired outcome of this error message and the action that we ask the user to perform. And I also brought you another example to show you that this does not only apply to longer forms of copy. And this is taken from an empty state of the Walmart website, the empty shopping cart. And this one says sign in to see your saved items. And here we see sign in as a CTA, which appears twice. And to see your item is the desired outcome. And I have an even shorter example also coming from an online supermarket, just a placeholder saying search for a name, category or recipe. Very, very minimalistic. And of course, this is a call to action. The user is being asked to do something. And you can also do this, of course, for your own UX copy in your own product on your own website. And you will see that mostly it's one or several of these five pieces of information. And what you can also see in the examples that I showed you is that these elements come in different combinations. Not all of them have to be there, but it's always some of them or at least one of them. Mostly it's at least the CTA because UX writing is supposed to guide users. Okay. So it only makes sense that at least the CTA is there. Now, knowing about this formula helps you in two ways. First, it helps you with writing UX copy, especially when you don't know where to start. Let's imagine you're being asked to write a placeholder for a photo book app. So we're in a space that the user can fill with photos and you just don't know where to start writing the placeholder for this. Then what you do is you take this formula as a blueprint and just fill in the information pieces piece by piece. Now let's do this together so that I can show you how that works. As I said, we have the following types of information that we can use, right? So let's just fill this in like a template. We have current state, we have CTA, we have desired results, we have feature or function, and we have the brand indicator. So for the current state, we could say no photo here yet. For the CTA, we could say add photos. The desired outcome could be printed out photo book, the feature function information could be photo book creator and the brand indicator could be something quirky and motivating like let's go. So we have no photo here yet at photos, photo book creator, printed out photo book and let's go. Just fill it in like this, like a template, then add some syntax, turn it into a full sentence and what you will get is this. There are no photos here yet. Let's go add some photos and our photo book creator will let you design your own printed out photo book. This basically is a complete piece of UX copy, but we're not done yet because maybe you think to yourself, okay, this is just too long, or maybe you don't even have enough space for such a long message. So you want to edit this piece of copy. And this is the second way this formula can help. If we have to, or want to shorten our UX copy with the help of this formula, we can now rate the five single pieces of information according to their importance for us in this situation. And this is where we have to do some thinking. Most of the time, as I said, the CTA is most important because we, of course, want to guide users to do something. And the brand indicator usually is the least important type of information. So a prioritization of the information could look something like this for our specific case. But please note that according to where your copy element appears, the prioritization might look different. So let's say you are in a situation where your designer says, sorry, my friend, you need to make this text a lot shorter. We don't have enough space here. What you do is you now know how to make your text element shorter without compromising important information. Okay. This is where we got ourselves to. 
So the first time that you learn that this needs to be shorter, you take out the brand indicator because you define this as the least relevant type of information in this situation right here. And what you get is this. And if that is still too long, no problem. Take the second least important information out. And in this case, this is the feature or function part. And what you get is this. And you can even strip away every type of information except the most important one. You see that this copy element will still do what it is supposed to do, okay? It guides the user. So this really helps us when writing UX copy strategically and in a structured way. And you don't need to do this for each and every single piece of text that you have to write, but especially if you are a new UX writer, a UX writing beginner, you can use this framework to just practice structured writing and eventually you will follow this pattern naturally and intuitively. And of course, what I also need to mention is that this right here is only one possible example of a framework that you can follow, okay? You might also develop your own framework or work with another one. But in case you don't have a framework yet or you don't want to come up with one yourself, this one might be helpful to you. And I think this is a good moment to end this video. I hope this was helpful to you. If there is anything that you want to discuss, anything that you want to share or a question that you would like to ask, let me know in the comments. Also, make sure you hit like and subscribe. Make sure you check out writewithdrcat.com and also make sure you follow me on Instagram where I post free tips about writing in tech and UX writing in particular. And apart from that, as always, Keep on writing, enjoy the process, and I hope to see you sometime soon.